Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Charles. Enjoy. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. As always, it's your host, Charles, and today we've got a great one for you. So I'm going to be sitting down with Andy Pickering. He's an editor for Brave New Coin, and he also hosts a cryptocurrency podcast called Crypto Conversations. And today we're just going to be talking about how to run both successfully. I feel like there are a lot of podcasts out there. There are a lot of media sites, but few people are doing it right. Now, before we get into all of that, I do just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors. The first being Roundly X. These guys are wonderful. I've been talking about them for close to two months now. What you do is you link your credit and debit cards, and with each purchase, it gets rounded up to the next dollar, and that spare change is invested into Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency of your choosing. As things start to heat up, this dollar cost averaging really starts to pay off and it's super stress-free super easy super hands-off so if you haven't created an account already there's a link in the description below i encourage you to go sign up right now the second is coinflex they are the first physically delivered crypto futures exchange there's been a lot of talk about you know exchanges recently on twitter and i encourage you guys to explore other options coinflex being one of them a couple of the key advantages to CoinFlex are that they have some of the lowest, if not the lowest fees in the market, depending on how much Flex you own. On top of that, Flex staking is live and you are paid $10 USDT per thousand Flex that you own per month. They've also implemented a couple new features one of which is that you can click straight into the order books and limit in and out of trades. Perfect for scalping. There was a video circulating. I'm sure you've seen it. If not, go check it out. And then lastly, we got these bracket order competitions coming up. They're volume based. You need as little as $888 in your account to enter these competitions and they are giving away $10,000 a day. That's right, 10 grand a day. Uh, so head on over, sign up. There is a little bit of a learning curve uh, and you need to be ready for these competitions. You need to understand how the site works if you're going to be successful. Now, let's talk with Andy and let's get into the show. So Andy, before we kind of jump into it and talk about everything that you've got going on, do you think you could just give us a little bit of background on yourself and what you were doing before you found cryptocurrencies? Sure, Charles. I mean, how far back do you want to go? I guess, um, what was I doing before crypto? You know, when I, I went to university uh, a little while ago and through university, I, I discovered student radio. And from there, you know, I, I kind of got the bug for, you know, doing radio shows and, and DJing. And then through doing that, I started putting on a lot of parties as a promoter and, Kind of from doing that, I got quite into the dance music DJ culture at the time. And at the time, there was no real dance music media. So me and a friend, we we created our own magazine. We started a magazine and I did that for 10 years. And so I got into publishing. And then uh, kind of as I sort of outgrew the dance music scene, I, I was still into publishing. So I started another magazine, which was a really kind of high-end luxury design, art and fashion magazine. Did that for a while. And then I guess I segued into corporate media and through a weird turn of events, uh, that led me to meeting a guy who goes by the name of Kim.com, who I think your listeners will be aware of, Charles. And so I had a chance meeting with Kim and this is, this is a while ago, this is probably 2012, but as I say, I was in media and I ended up breaking the story in New Zealand media that Kim.com was seriously considering the idea of starting a political party to contest the New Zealand general election, because, you know, you probably know that Kim is effectively 
you know, contained here in New Zealand and, and the United States government has been trying to extradite him back to the US to probably throw the book at him, put him in jail. So he's been fighting that for like, you know, probably best part of a decade. But long story short, I said to Kim, look, Kim, if you are serious about starting a political party, you're going to need some help. And, um, you know, I put my hand up and uh, and Kim said, yeah, sure, Andy, you can help me. So I was one of the first people to get on board with Kim and what became the Internet Party. And, um, yeah, that was kind of how I ended up being introduced to Bitcoin, actually, through Kim, because at the time, under New Zealand electoral law, if you want to join a political party, you have to pay a fee, right? And so we made it possible for people to join the internet party and they could pay their fee by using Bitcoin. And so that was, you know, quite cool. And not a lot of people uh, took advantage of that. But as I say, that was my first introduction to Bitcoin. Didn't really go down the rabbit hole then, unfortunately. I, I wish I did. But, um, you know, after after the 2014 general election, the Internet Party kind of died a horrible death and um, everyone went their separate ways. And uh, so I spent a bit of time in digital media, social media, and then early 2017, I sort of noticed that something was happening in the world of Bitcoin. And so I started looking into it again and, um, yeah, just got uh, went down the rabbit hole, shall we say, early 2017 and, and you know, just got more into it as the uh, the famous 2017 bull market played out. And by that end of that year, I, I set myself a goal. I was like, all right, Andy, let's take this seriously. Let's start working in crypto. And here we are. Man, that is one of the more interesting stories that I've heard on this podcast. Uh, I don't know many people that have worked with Kim.com. I'm sure my entire audience knows who he is. Uh, but the reason I ask this question is I kind of just want to see if any of what you were doing beforehand has bled into what you're doing now in the cryptocurrency scene. And it definitely sounds like it does. Uh, you said you were doing, you know, very start of your career, some radio. Uh, then you got into the dance music scene. And then you were doing some editing, I believe, uh, at a couple different magazines. Fast forward a little bit, you met Kim.com, you got your first introduction to Bitcoin. And then a few years later uh, is when you really got serious about it and you started working in the industry uh, and decided to make kind of quote unquote cri cryptocurrencies your job. Uh, and so you've got two things going on right now that I really want to talk about, and that's your podcast, and you're also an editor uh, for Brave New Coin. So can you just give us a quick rundown of what each of those is about? Yeah, man, for sure. So Brave New Coin is, we're a market data company here in New Zealand, and the company was founded some time ago, um, let's say around 2013, 2014, something like that. So so the company is, as I say, a market data and research company. So we create market data products for anyone who needs a data solution, right? So that could be someone either in the existing cryptocurrency slash blockchain space, like an exchange or uh, you know someone like that, or it could be someone on the more traditional legacy financial side, like you know Amazon or the Nasdaq or someone like that. So if someone needs a data solution, they come to us and we build it. So the website BraveNewCoin.com, you know we have the website showcases all of our different capabilities and what we can do. But we also run a a research and a news division, a content division. So we don't see ourselves as being in the the breaking news side of things. We more provide in-depth analysis, market research, and try and provide value that way. But the, the website kind of exists as a, it's like a portal into our, you know, suite of uh, institutional grade market data products. And the podcast is just another another part of that, I guess, you know, we, we want to create really good content so that people are aware of Braid New Coin as a brand and then what we can do in terms of being one of the best providers of make it market data solutions in the space. Uh, so 
I run a podcast as well. We kind of go through some of the same things. Uh, but a big thing that I wanted to talk about was this idea that, you know, the market for content is extremely oversaturated, uh, in my opinion, at least. You know, everyone's got a podcast. Everyone's doing media of some sorts. Everyone's creating content. Uh, and not a lot of people are doing it successfully. Uh, and you've had, you know, a very long standing career in this industry. So I thought it'd be great to have you on to kind of talk about how to do it right. Uh, so can you talk to us about, you know, what you guys are kind of doing differently and how to see success uh, when you're creating any kind of content, you know, whether that be a con- uh, podcast, um, any kind of media online, any written media? Can you just walk us through, you know, kind of how to do it differently and how to see success? That's a million dollar question is Charles. And I think if there was an easy answer to that question, then, you know, you wouldn't need to ask me. But um, I suppose from my point of view, you know, there's a couple of things you need to, it, it is really difficult. And you're quite correct in that you say the, the crypto space, it is saturated at the moment in terms of people putting out content. And that is right across the board. You know, you've got individual people such as yourself who are pumping out memes on Twitter and then maybe doing a podcast as well. So, you know, you do that really well. Someone like BitLord does that really well. You know, you guys are the independents. And then you've got the, you know, the brands. So, you know, all the different media companies, your Coindesks, the Blocks, Cointelegraph, and of course us here at Brave New Coin. And there's pros and cons of, of both, right? Like from my point of view, I see individual people such as yourself or your bit lords you have so much more freedom you can absolutely talk just smack on yeah. twitter and there's an amazing amount of freedom that comes with that whereas if you're representing a brand and like like i am you know there's less ability to say really outrageous stuff to get the the likes and the retweets and so on but on the other hand you have the backing of a media organization who can serve your content out there. So I think there's there's pros and cons for both, but but really what you've got to do is try and provide some kind of either a unique point of difference or you know you can provide education or you can provide entertainment or you can try and mix the two. And in my mind, you know, mixing the two is kind of where it's at. And when I say entertainment, I mean you know, you don't need to be really silly or or getting naked in the shower like Bitlord. I don't know why I keep using his <laughs> as, as an example, but he is a good example of, of, course of that extreme is. side, right? But I, I, I guess what I mean by keeping it entertaining is if you're doing a professional podcast, you want to put the effort in. So you want to edit it really nicely. You want to fight really hard to get the best possible guests. You want to have the best possible audio quality. And you want to put a bit of time in terms of like editing it, making some kind of narrative, telling a story that you want to tell so that the audience is entertained and motivated and hopefully they're going to come back and you're going to get that subscribe and, you know, build an audience over time. But, you know, look, it's a challenge, right? Of course, man. I've been going through it myself. You know, I'm competing with everybody else, trying to get downloads, trying to get people listening to it, trying to keep people listening to it. And there's, you know, daily struggles. Uh, But I really like that you're talking about the fact that as individuals like myself, I do have a lot more freedom to kind of post as I please and kind of get some of that more viral stuff going uh, that's easy to like and share and retweet. It's these memes. Uh, And that's my Twitter brand. Of course, on the podcast, I'm much more professional and I'm kind of trying to blend the two, which like you were saying was a great way to do it. Uh, But there are three big things that you really touched on there that I kind of want to recap that are extremely important if you're creating any kind of content. Uh, And that would be, especially for a podcast, you want solid guests. So I've been working my ass off trying to get on the best of the best. And I can see in the numbers that people really, you know, come to listen when I do have those better guests on. Uh, You also mentioned the audio quality. Uh, which is huge uh, for me or anyone else who's listening to a podcast, you know that when you're listening to them and the audio quality is no good, it's hard no matter what kind of content they're putting out. It could be the best information out there. You don't want to listen to it because the audio quality is garbage. And then lastly, you talked about the fact that you got to do you know solid editing, uh, which I'm still working on, and that kind of feeds back into the audio quality. 
uh, but you also want it to be a conversation with your guest. It wants you know, it needs to flow nicely. Uh, at first, when I was doing mine, it was very, very much like an interview. It was I ask a question, they answer. I ask a question, they answer. I've tried to make it more of a conversation, which helps with the flow and editing of it. Uh, but so you're doing the podcast with Brave New Coin, um, and you talked about the fact that it's you, you don't have the freedom to kind of post all these memes and really be a little bit more out there because you have this brand that's backing you. Uh, so can you talk to us about how, like some of the benefits of having this big kind of brand behind you, what do they do to help push your podcast uh, for the people out there who are trying to go that route? Well, obviously, you know, Brave New Coin is, is an established brand simply because we've been around for, you know, five years or so. And so it comes that comes with a certain amount of brand recognition and Brave New Coin is, you know, a really respected player in the space. So, you know, me coming along and starting the Crypto Conversation podcast, you know, it, it means that we have a little bit of uh, brand capital, if you like. So that means that we can go out to some high profile guests and say, yo, it's Andy here from the Crypto Conversation, Brave New Coin. Would you come on the podcast? And they're they're more likely to open your Twitter DM or, or, or read your email if you're, um, you know, not just some Joe Blow who's starting a, a hobbyist podcast with no established listeners and, you know, they don't know if they're going to be ambushed with some weird questions or, or whatever it is. That was, I think, my biggest struggle when I first started was I would reach out to guests. I wasn't much of an anybody and I was like, hey, do you want to come on? And uh, you know, a couple of people were like, yeah, I'd love to. Other people were like, well, you're not really an established player. You know, I, I don't think I have the time for it. Whereas with you or any kind of brand that is putting out a podcast, they have that brand to rely on. Um, so can you maybe talk to us about some other strategies on the on your side of things? When I say your side of things, I mean kind of the brand, you know, the corporate uh, podcast that you have. Uh, can you just talk to us about some of the strategies for getting it out there? Because like you said with me, you know, I'm able to have fun on Twitter. I can kind of go a little bit more viral and then push people to the podcast. What kind of strategies have you guys implored to get people to listen? To be honest, Charles, you know, we're still in the early days of this thing. So we started the podcast back in, I think, around June or July of this year. And so I've published... 21 episodes so i think that's you know we're fairly new when you look at you know this uh, the kind of the, the most established players who you people like um say laura shin or even you know pete from uh what bitcoin did you know those guys are into the hundreds of episodes already right so for us you know this year has just been about establishing the base and kind of getting into the groove of what we're doing so now i'm publishing a podcast every week and in terms of getting it out there you know we we have a dedicated podcast page within bravenewcoin.com although you have to hunt around a little bit to find it but it's <laughs> it's really you know part of the strategy for 2020 and man i love saying 2020 don't you it's like oh it's, can you so believe crazy. it's going to be 2020 next year that we are literally building the future right now charles so for 2020 everyone's got to you know up their game and look at you know what are you doing is your strategy future proof because you know 2020 is very futuristic sounding so we're looking at upgrading our website and kind of just making sure that our you know digital content delivery is the best it can be and it's about finding you know ways to meet your audience and grow your audience on as many platforms as you can because audience is quite fragmented these days you know as much as you know there's a massive crypto twitter community but you know people are on all these other channels as well, whether it's you know Instagram or, or TikTok, which you know you don't, probably don't have crypto uh, communities, but you can't really discount any of these new delivery mediums because some of them will grow exponentially quickly. You know that's a given. Even like today, did you, did you see uh, Jack Dorsey's tweet? Absolutely fascinating. He's um, wants to build out this uh, decentralized social media platform, not platform. Um, what do you call it, you know, a, uh, a protocol. And so who knows what's going to happen, but you, you really need to just be able to adapt and make sure that what you're doing is relevant. So some of the same issues that I'm dealing with where it's like I'm trying to capture as large an audience as possible uh, and 
So I'm reaching out on different social media platforms, or at least I'm starting to, uh, trying to capture that audience. But I think the one thing that's different is that, you know, when you're a brand and you now have a podcast, you need to kind of seamlessly integrate it into your whole brand. Uh, So with myself, you know, my podcast is very different than my online Twitter persona. And I think it's worked out very, very well uh, because I kind of get the professionals and I push them there and then I can do what I want on Twitter and be successful and grow that brand as well. Uh, Whereas you guys, you know, it all needs to be one big package. Uh, When you head to the website, it needs to be everything that Brave New Coin is plus the podcast on top of it. So for anyone out there who's listening that has a little bit more of a serious brand, make sure that your podcast seamlessly integrates with it. Uh, If it's, you know, way off from what you guys are normally doing, I think you're not going to have as much success because the people who are coming to already like what you're doing. And if you add a podcast on top of that, that already kind of flows with it, they'll be more interested in listening to that podcast as well. So I appreciate you kind of walking us through what you were doing before you found cryptocurrencies, what you're doing now. Uh, You kind of briefly touched on it and the fact that 2020 is right around the corner and it blows my mind. Uh, This last decade has blown by. uh, I think being in the cryptocurrency industry has made time go even faster because there's just so much going on constantly. Uh, But I always like to ask my guests, you know, what are you most excited for in the coming six to 12 months? And if you have anything big in your pipeline. Uh, So is there anything on your end that you're excited for? I mean, look, I'm just excited to see where we can all individually, like I'm excited to see you grow your podcast. I'm excited to grow our podcast. And, you know, I always take inspiration from other people in the space that have done really well. Like, you know, obviously Pete has been probably the podcast success story of 2019. And, you know, I'm always amazed at how he is relentless in terms of, you know, growing the different podcasts that he does and, you know, his ability to kind of be combative on Twitter, which has probably built his audience as well. So I suppose, you know, what are we excited about on the podcast? Just want to keep growing it. And, um, yeah, got a few ideas on how we can do that. Um, from the personal point of view, um, you know, got to keep just stacking stats, st- stacking stats and see, you know, what the market will bring us next year. For Brave New Coin, you know, we have some pretty exciting products in the pipeline. You know, we're, we're really starting to grow the market data business and that's going to new heights because there's this increasing need for you know, uh, whether people on the uh, the crypto side or the traditional market side, you know, they, they're they coming to us and they want us to build these increasingly exotic and complex financial products, or that, that's what they want to build. But for them to build it, they need the data solutions, right? Whether it's a, a market index or, or something like that. A good example is we made a, um, a market index for the Bitsy exchange. And so we're, we're looking at future products like that. Um, so shout out to the Brave New Coin market data team. Another thing that we are working on really hard, I don't know if you've seen BNC Pro, Charles, but you know the product team here throughout this year, you know, we've been working for probably two years now on, on what we call BNC Pro, which is, it's like a, imagine a, a terminal-like experience for cryptocurrency traders. And it kind of brings all your, your, your exchange uh, holdings, your wallet holdings, and price charts. You can kind of access it all from one terminal. And so we're in, we're in beta at the moment and slowly preparing to release that full throttle. So I think that'll be a big, big focus for us in 2020. And you look, if if any of your listeners uh, want to check that out, just go to BNC, uh, bravenewcoin.com and look for BNC Pro. It's, it's a, a really interesting platform. I was actually going to ask if we could get all of that, you know, your website, the podcast link, that kind of thing. Because I like to throw it in the description for my audience. I'm excited to see what you guys have. Sounds like you're going to have a massive year. Uh, Also on the personal side, I like that you included that. It wasn't just Brave New Coin, the podcast, it was yourself as well. Uh, And the fact that you want to continue to stack sats, uh, which I think should be everyone's goal if they care or believe in Bitcoin. I preach it a lot. That's kind of why I have this show Uh, It's to teach people how to build businesses, make more money, make Bitcoin if they want that option. 
so I, I'm really excited for what you guys have got going on. Again, for my audience, I'll have links to it all in the description. Uh, 2020 is going to be a massive year, uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. Now, before we end, I do have one last question that I like to ask my audience. Uh, I've, I've kind of rephrased it in many different ways, uh, but I want to kind of get back to what I was doing originally, which was, say the Brave New Coin team didn't have the podcast, say it completely disappeared, all your episodes were wiped, nobody knew you guys were doing a podcast, what is the very first thing that you would do so that you can get back to where you're at today? And I, just to explain a little bit, you know, I, I want people out there listening who haven't, you know, got a podcast, um, say it's a company or personal, they, they need like the first step. What's the very first thing that's most important to you that would get you back to where you're at today? Guys, I'm going to answer this in a slightly more abstract fashion, and I, I hope that's okay with you. And oh, look, of I don't course. want to come across as uh, too much Timothy, what's his name? Tony Robbins. I don't want to come across <laughs> as your motivational coach here, but really, as cheesy as it sounds, all you have to do is you've got to find your passion. You know, it's that kind of cheesy Instagram concept. I think the, the Japanese, it's a Japanese concept. They call it the e Ikaki, I don't know. I'm probably saying that, or probably saying that wrong. But you know what it means. It's that idea that I think it loosely translates as you have to find your reason for being or your higher purpose. And you know, that's just another way of saying what is the intersection of what are you good at, what do you love to do, what does the what does the world need more of, and what can you be paid for? And if you can find something that is in the middle or the intersection of those four vectors, then, you know, that is the unique thing that you have to offer to the world. So in my case, you know, uh, I'm pretty passionate about podcasting. I'm pretty passionate about talking to whoever it is, whether it's yourself or Mark Yusko or Andreas Antonopoulos or any of these people. And I'm, I'm curious about finding out what makes them tick. And I'm really passionate about trying to package that up in a way that I can reflect back out into the world and give the audience some kind of inspiration, some kind of knowledge, something that's going to get them through their day so that they can come up, go to sleep, have a good sleep, and wake up in 2020 and go, heck yeah, let's kick some ass. You know, you said you didn't want to sound like, you know, Tony Robbins or some of these kind of guru, quote-unquote gurus, but I think you're right, you know, before you even come up with a name or get your site set up or try to find your target audience, any of that kind of stuff, buy any kind of equipment, I think you really do need to explore what you're most passionate about because we can both attest to this. We we talk to people on a weekly basis. We then go through and do the editing, the uploading. It can become a drag if you're not super passionate about it. Like if I didn't love talking to entrepreneurs, if I didn't love having them on, learning from them, teaching the community, you know, this this would be work. And I that's the reason I quit my job was I wanted to find something that I was passionate about and that I didn't see as work. Uh, and eventually you'll grow to hate it if you see it as just work. I've talked to many people in the cryptocurrency industry who originally got in. They've now, it's now turned into a job. They're kind of just going through the motions and they're looking for the next thing. And so all the work that they've put in now is kind of, you know, all for nothing at the end of the day. So if you're not passionate about it, I would suggest finding something that you are passionate about and starting there because you can really pour your whole heart and soul into it and work your ass off harder than you normally would with any other kind of job. So I love that. I I, I mean, like it is a little bit kind of guru-esque, but I think it's I think it's the best place to start. So I really appreciate that. Uh, before we go, is there anything else that you'd like my audience to know? Oh, I would say drink more single malt whiskey. That's my other personal goal is to expand my whiskey collection. I love whiskey. If you're not down the whiskey rabbit hole, my two favorite rabbit holes are the Bitcoin rabbit hole and the whiskey rabbit hole, and both are bottomless as far as I can tell. Uh, in terms of other other um, things to impart to your audience, please come check me out on Twitter at Andy Pickering NZ and please, um, you know, 
give give the crypto conversation podcast a listen give us a subscription and uh let me know what you think there we go perfect like i said we'll have a link to the in the description with all of that info we'll have your twitter the site a link to the podcast I encourage you guys to all go listen to it. At least give it one episode. That's what I, what I always try to preach is give it one episode. See if you at all like it. Explore a couple more if you do and go from there. Uh, but to just completely ignore it uh, because you think you don't have the time or the energy is, I think, a little bit absurd. Uh, so go give it one listen. Uh, I also really like that you brought drinking into the conversation. I'm a, I'm a I can't say that I'm a whiskey snob or anything like that. It's definitely my preferred drink, uh, but I'm very uncultured, so I'll drink just about anything. Um, but I really appreciate that you brought the whiskey and the drinking to the podcast, and I can support that wholeheartedly. Uh, so thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. I love that people take the time to come on and teach my audience a little something and explain what their business is about. Uh, so again, you know, I really appreciate it. Thanks for this one, Andy. I really appreciate it. Thanks to you, Charles. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Hey, see, see you out there and let's keep uh, smashing some podcasting goals in 2020. Both of us are going to kill it in 2020. I already know it. All right. That wraps up another episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I just want to take a quick second to remind you to leave us a review and subscribe to the show. We would greatly appreciate it if you did. And we look forward to seeing you next episode.